Good morning, folks. I suppose the title explains the zenith of today's show, but there's more to see from the sun to earthquakes to life. These plasma filaments sure are active. Let's start with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun brought the southern coronal hole through, with another one clearly trailing it. More big quakes likely to follow with the double IMF instigation there, and I'll also be monitoring the satellite feeds to better diagnose these small filaments exiting the corona much more frequently now. Also had a nice little pop at the departing active region, not aimed at Earth and small, but worth a notice. Solar wind here, calming in all ways, and geomagnetism is calm too. That will change when the stream from that southern coronal hole arrives probably tomorrow. Odd rumble off the coast of Australia there, had some blot echoes follow that in the region, including another that struck right as I said good morning, folks. Also had odd sister quakes in Panama yesterday, not quite enough to cause damage, but enough to wake the neighborhood, and blot echoes have followed that event as well. Let's hit two stories of life. The first is the oldest terrestrial fossil known. Only marine fossils can claim elder states, and this is a fungus that apparently kicked off the transformation of the world after a super ice age. 3D mapping of the structure seen here. This here is Mighty Mouse. Reading the story just made me so happy yesterday. They thought he was gone, extinct. The Pinatubo Volcano Mouse, an odd spin-off of life, presumed to be gone after Pinatubo exploded 30 years ago. They were only recently able to get back to certain areas, and who did they find? Mighty Mouse. If we all just call him that, they may have no choice but to change the name. Now a bit more our usual flavor. Hubble snapping a gorgeous nebula, and the focus of the news release linked with it is the odd shape of the outer wispy halo shell. They say it is drawn back and distorted by interaction with the interstellar medium. Not that there's anything else interesting happening inside there. End of life for a star? Au contraire, mon frere. It merely shook off the ash and was born anew. A literal phoenix star with the baby star jets and off-plane rotational instability that twists those jets into the S shape. But yeah, how about that wispy halo? So folks, here's our magnetic excursion update. There's two lines of study tracing the decline, actually. One took off in 2000 when NASA described a 10% loss in the field since the 1800s. In 2010, the European Space Agency, monitoring with Swarm, updated that number to 15%. While no new number has been given, the agency continued updating the acceleration of the field, and the mission manager described a 5% loss of Earth's field per decade now instead of per century. Then in 2020, we learned that another acceleration had actually taken place in 2017. That's pretty much one side of the table, and the other is so spread out among other institutions and researchers, we'll just show how the two lines of tracking this decline differ. Other groups are saying we have only lost 9% long term, with 2% more recently. What's amazing is even though the one on the right looks far less scary to the eye than the story told by NASA, ESA, ETH Zurich, and the Division of Geomagnetism at DTU, look again. On the right, you have 9% lost in 1,000 years, but in the first 970 years or so, you lost 7%. It took only 30 years to lose another 2. That's actually a faster acceleration. And it turns out they both come out something scary in about 20 years. But today we can update that blue one with a confirmation of what just came out of my mouth 10 seconds ago. First, they are getting much more specific. It's not 2% since the 80s. It was 2.3% from 1980 to 2011. Again, who knows which numbers are actually right, but we can sort of update this chart here now and... Who cares which is right when we're set for a photo finish? I care that for the first time, the blue side actually seems concerned. All the concern so far has been from the red, probably because those numbers were bigger, but acceleration rate is key when looking forward rather than into the past. This new study suggests that the next time the sun gears up, it's going to be much worse than the 1989 Quebec blackout or even the 1859 Carrington event super solar storm. And they're right. Everything from the loss of power grids, to satellites, to wires inside homes and basic electrical products, an increased radiation bombardment to humans, and other biological dysfunction due to interference with normal geomagnetic rhythms and geoelectric currents. By the way, that paper was submitted to the journal before this one came out and indeed does not even take into account the more recently known acceleration of the field.
And so, of course, as if I wasn't concerned enough doing last night's journal checks, there's more unexpected and anomalous lightning phenomena. Highly complex, this one, but think normally electrically charged atmospheric phenomena reversed. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you, John Adams, for supporting Observer Ranch. He chose the Morning News shout-out reward. He may not be the second president, but he is my sensei. Thank you, sir. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.35 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.